So welcome, my name is Paul Villeneuve, and today we're gonna to give you a little bit of a tour of the electrical engineering technology labs that we have located in Barrows Hall. I am an associate, actually I'm a full professor and have been with electrical engineering technology for 17 years. I'm also a graduate of UMaine and actually took a number of courses in the electrical engineering technology program. So if you decide to start in our program, you'll spend a fair amount of time, especially in your first year, in this room. This is the analog components, elect analog electronics lab, where we get to build circuits, uh, small scale breadboard circuits to sort of verify fundamentals and prove that they actually match the equations that you'll be learning in class. So each station, we currently have 10 and we'll be upgrading those to 12. Each station is exactly the same. We have some DC power supplies. We have some uh, AC power supplies, which are called function generators. We have oscilloscopes and we have multimeters along with a number of cables and whatnot per station. Um, we do have components in some of the back cabinets and it allows us again to just really kind of emphasize and, and build actual circuits. So in terms of, you know, one of the distinctions of engineering technology is really getting uh, a good feel for what's happening from a practical perspective and building physical circuits. And so this lab, we get you to build a lot of circuits and uh, demonstrate that. And we spend three to four classes utilizing this lab to really demonstrate and see what's going on in these particular uh, electrical circuits. So let's move on to our next lab. Next lab we'll be looking at is for PLCs, essentially industrial automation. So if you were to go to a paper mill or a processing facility, you'll find these type of uh, components in them. So these are programmable logic controllers and they have power supply, a brain, and then some input, sometimes analog, sometimes digital. They also have some output. And what you do is you build some of your components or your circuits and you analyze it in ladder logic and then you verify that switches in certain conditions will turn lights on and off or turn meters and make things happen. So car companies use these because they allow a lot of uh, flexibility for equipment and it makes it very efficient to make changes. Also troubleshooting is really easy and um, you're just gonna find that there's a lot of flexibility with this. So this is the industrial automation aspect of it using programmable logic controllers. We also have things where we can control the speeds of some motors. And so if you can see in the back here, we have a screen that you can protect your fingers, but we basically can adjust the speed of motors. In an industrial facility, sometimes things are going too fast or too slow, and this variable frequency drive allows you to change the speed to enhance productivity, improve efficiency, uh, utilize less energy, et cetera, et cetera. We also are pretty unique because we have these devices called real-time automation controllers, and those are intended to integrate into a server so that you can use an overall plant, what we call a human machine interface, which allows us to really go ahead and get really nitty gritty in managing an overall plant with individual devices, but at a higher level. So for example, you could run an entire processing facility, a, a very large generating plant with just a couple of operators in a control room, and then have a few rolling operators just to make sure that there's not fires or things happening like that. So as we get more and more sophisticated with our automation, more error, more troubleshooting, more checking, it's gonna make it so that we're more precise we can get better responses, and we can troubleshoot things much more effectively. So this is really a unique part of our program, and not a lot of programs across the country have this capability. Um, you can see here kind of a scale model of an industrial facility. This is essentially a facility that converts wood products into firewood. So you have scale logs, which would be dowels, that would be on this assembly. They ride through here, and you can notice a sensor here to detect that there's an actual log, and then that log will traverse through, it'll be held in position, and the saw comes down and cuts it to length. It gets ejected into this spot where you have this hydraulic ram that drives it and then pushes it through the splitter, and then hopefully you get fairly well cut and split pieces of uh, wood. So this is a dowel that's been cut in half, but get, you get the sense of it. And so this is really interesting because it allows you to build systems that are mechanical. You can see this is a really big mechanical process, but all the brains and all the control are done with electronics. And as we get more and more sophisticated with our controls, more and more work is going to be done with uh, electronic controls and whatnot. So this is a fair amount of hydraulics. You're starting to see more and more of this is being done with electric circuits as we get more power, better efficiency, more improvements, and, um, 
yeah, we, we're getting a lot of improvements and a lot of changes. Let's move on to our next lab, which is the lab that we get to demonstrate some AC circuits and we get to build, we get to build some circuits that are gonna be real world. So the utility power system, what's coming into your house, it's what's called alternating current. And in this lab, it's pretty much focused on alternating current systems. So we have six stations and each of these stations are more or less con configured the same. We have a variable three phase power supply. We also have some DC because some of the equipment that we have here actually need a DC field to be able to drive things. We also have a pretty fancy uh, metering package, which is this data acquisition, which converts your computer into a very, very, very fancy multimeter. So um, what that allows us to do is do way more sophisticated analysis and understanding of the circuits by using your computer to look at waveforms. So these modules, you can swap them in and out pretty easily, and it just allows us greater flexibility to try different tests of equipment. So if you were to look around the perimeter of the room, you'll see all kinds of different modules and how we can change these things out. So this is a lab that you'd be using perhaps in your sophomore or even junior years. And also some of our students and senior projects will use some of the, equi the equipment in this lab to go ahead and test it. Nice thing is it's very safe. We have good guards here. All of our wires have guards associated with them. And you can see that we have nice shielding. So you are prevented from coming into lock contact with any of the live parts. So really nice uh, lab, so we can work with real power, but we don't actually have to expose ourselves to anything dangerous, so a very safe environment. Let's go look at our senior project lab. And this lab is intended to be a mess because this is really a student run lab where they build lots and lots of projects. You're gonna spend three semesters in here, designing something that demonstrates what you've learned through the program. That's called a capstone experience. So as a capstone experience, you get to say, what would I like to build? So you pick a project and then you demonstrate that it meets your specifications and then you get to demonstrate it to your class. So it really gives you, a, you know, sort of that sense of accomplishment. Wow, look what I've learned in the four years that I've been here. I've been able to take, you know, what little math and physics understanding I had and now I can build this really cool circuit that can control the speed of a motor or it can monitor a parking lot and determine where parking spots are available or, you know, can enhance uh, capture of uh, photovoltaic energy. So um, lots of components here all kinds of equipment everything is sort of spread out but again it's it's not meant to be a junk room per se but it's meant to have a lot of equipment and if you need something you just grab it out of the cabinet and uh, see what works and so uh, this would be your junior and senior years where you get to go in and uh, grab a, a bench and it becomes your space for that period of time let's go into the next lab which has another really unique part of the program so I'm a utility person by experience, and our graduates really get picked up by the utility world, and it's mainly because we expose them to real world practical devices. So if you were to go to any utility substation or any process area that has power generation or utility, you would see lots of these devices. These just happen to be Schweitzer Engineering Laboratories equipment, but a lot of the philosophies apply to uh, any manufacturer, General Electric, ABB, et cetera, et cetera. So this is if you have a real world utility system, they monitor the same exact parameters we do and they will issue trips to protect the line, maintain high reliability, but remove faults from, out of, from service. So we have these and there are three identical stations. So you get to actually put your settings, check that they work, make sure that everything goes as intended and you get to get real familiar with these particular devices. So very unique that we have these. A lot of uh, institutions are trying to get more adapted into relaying, but because we've got these boxes and we get a lot of industry support, we do very, very well with explaining these topics. And this is a really in-demand part of our, of our program. And we've had a number of people that hire our students say, you need to have them take all, everybody take this class because they've got such a great set of skills that they pick up by doing this relay lab part. So very, very powerful part of the lab. Let's move on to the printed circuit board lab. So this is a smaller part of the program, but it does a very effective job 
of showing you how your cell phone, um, pretty much any handheld device, how you can minimize the size and the energy consumption by doing what's called a printed circuit board. And so essentially you can design a printed circuit board. We have a class that you design a printed circuit board and then you can use uh, uh, a UV device that actually will put your layout of your circuit board onto essentially um, a copper bus or a copper plate and then you bake that in the oven so that it stays in place and then you use this milling machine to go ahead and remove any of the copper pieces that uh, don't want to be there because you don't want to have connections between devices that don't belong because the circuit won't in, uh, work as intended. So again another really nice distinctive um, that we have this equipment and then we offer uh, this, this, this material. So that's a brief tour of our labs. We're happy to give you further tours and uh, to have any contact information. There's lots of contact information on the web and I look forward to hearing from you very soon. Thank you very much.